Hello, my name is Darren Thomas and I'm the Director of Educational Research Techniques. In this video, we're going to take a look at how to do APA referencing using LaTeX. So, to the left, you can see my LaTeX code. And so, we're going to use document class article. And the only package that we need in this example is NatBib. So, that's why we have this use package and then in the curly br braces, NatBib. Now, one thing that I need to mention is that, you know, there's way more than one way to do this. But the example that I was able to find that works for me is using the NatBib package and these things like that. Now, um, the stuff in black is going to be the first example that we're going to look at. Everything that is in red is commented out. You use the percentage sign here to comment out the, uh, uh, the things you, do, you want LaTeX to ignore. So as I remove the percentage sign there, these things will become available and you'll see the code updated. Now, at the bottom, of the information here I have in line 20 and 21 I hope you can see that um, a command called bibliography and inside of exported items this is the name of the bib tech uh, the bib tech file the bib file if you will that has all of my information inside it so if you look now off to your right you can see my bib tech information right here um, this is the actual references that are in the file and what LaTeX does is that it reads this information um, as it updates the, the references here. Now, um, one thing that I need to mention is that, you know, we're not going to cover how to pull the references from the internet or anything like that. We're going to assume that you already have the file and that you just need to figure out how to get it into LaTeX. The second thing that I have to mention as well is that you need to save your bib file, your .bib file, inside whatever the working directory is for your for your document that's using a lot La tech that's important as well otherwise you have to tell it where the file is at in other words now in line 21 i have something called uh bibliography style and so for my for my i want apa like and then that's the end of the document this stuff in line 24 is just for me uh not necessary for you when you run the code so the first thing we want to do is we want to actually create the document. And so when I click on this little green button here at the top, and you know I'm using TechWorks here, this is one of the many editors for LaTeX. I just click here. He wants me to save it. I just say save, and then it updates. And so you can see, well, not quite what we were looking for. We're not quite done. What we need to do next now, after we actually create the document, is we need to change the uh, the, the the little drop-down box here, change the, the the compiler, if you will, and click on Bib Tech. And it looks like nothing happened, but something did happen. Now we go back and we do PDF LaTeX again, and you can see here we have references now. That's good, but we gotta press it one more time. And now, if you look, I hope you've been watching carefully. We now have the name of the author and the year that they wrote these things in the parentheses and we also have our references down here below uh, everything is set up beautifully um, saves you a lot of time so what you have to do is this first you need to run the document you know pdf latex if you're using tech works uh, you're going to get a, a question mark a sentence with a question mark then you got to do the bib tech like i just showed you that kind of starts up the the bibliography then you got to run it PDF LaTeX again, and you'll, you'll have the references, but you still won't have the sentence quite complete. Then you run it a, a fourth time almost, if you will, a third or fourth time, and then, then you'll have everything you need. Now, the first sentence is just a sentence with an author as part of the sentence. So you can see right here, Adams, uh, 1969. This is kind of like when the author is a part of the sentence. Now, the next one in line eight here, this is when you want to put everything inside parentheses. But let me back up for a second. When you want to use the author as part of a, a sentence, you need to, of course, type your sentence as normal, but then the command you use is cite, cite T, C-I-T-E-T, -E and then in curly braces, you put the actual name of the reference file from the bib tech. Now, I mean, from the from your bib file. Now, let me explain that a little bit more. If you look closely here, um, I hope you can see that. Let me magnify this a little bit. If you look closely, right here, in the article, this information right here, whoa, excuse me, this information right here is the information, you, whoa, oh, this thing's got a mind of its own. This information, oh, never mind. This information right here, 
where you see uh, at article, this is the information you have to put inside the curly brace so that LaTeX knows what reference you are referring to. So that's the information that we use. So you can see, if I zoom out again, that this Adams underscore Maria underscore 1969, that is exactly what I put here. And I use the site T because I want to cite it in the text. I want it to be a part of the text. Now, the next example, let me uh, go ahead and get this back here. The next example in line eight, we're going to cite, but we're going to put the entire site inside parentheses. Now, I'm going to use the same author just to make it simple. So I just rerun my document here because I removed that, uh, what do you call it? I removed the percentage sign so it's no longer a comment. Now it's, it's active command. And so you can see right here, if you look closely, you can see that Adams is now inside parentheses rather than outside parentheses as in the first example. Very, very simple there. Not a lot to go on there. Now in line 10, um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna cite two authors in the text. So they're not gonna be in parentheses, they're gonna be in the text. And so I'm gonna use, instead of using the cite P, which puts things inside parentheses, I'm gonna use the cite T command again. And so I go ahead and run that. Now, if you look closely over here, you see I have a question mark because this second author here, Ackerman underscore intelligence underscore 1997, he's not in my references yet. So I have to go back up here in this little drop down box, click on BibTech, run that again so that I update my bibliography. And then I go back to PDF LaTeX, run it again. So now the references are updated, but I still don't have it inside my sentence. So I click again. And now, if you were looking closely, you can see that Adams, 1969, and Ackerman, and Hag Hagestai, 1997, are there now. So now I have two authors in the text. And of course, if you look now at line 12 over here in TechWorks, now I'm going to put both authors inside parentheses. Now, notice the difference between line 10 and line 12. In line 10, I use the cite uh, command twice because it's just separate commands to put in separate authors. But now that I'm using the site P now, I put both references inside the same curly brackets. There's no need to have a second one. If I make a second one, I'll have two sets of parentheses rather than one. And we know that in APA uh, style, that's normally incorrect. So now I'm gonna run and add line 12. And you can see right here, we got Adams, 1969. Then we have the semicolon, beautiful. Then we have the second author and done. That's it, beautiful. Now, technically, there should be an ampersand here normally when you have it inside the parentheses, so this is technically incorrect. All right, but we're gonna move on now. So next, we are going to use et al. Now, the, the beautiful thing of this is that um, the software normally automatically knows when to use et al. However, it kind of depends. It's, it's kind of finicky in my experience, so you have to check that. So now we're gonna run line 14. Now, this is a new author, so we're gonna to have to run it several times like we've done in the past. So I'm going to click on my little uh, circle with the red triangle inside it, get things going. You can see I have the question mark because I have a new reference. I gotta go back here, BibTech, run that, okay. Go back, PDF, run it again. You can see that now the reference are updated. And now to, to take care of that question mark right here, I run it one more time. And now it's up, it's, uh, everything's good to go. So that's how it works. And see, it's automatically using parentheses because there's more than, or excuse me, it's automatically using at all because you're using uh, more than two authors. Now, one thing I have to mention is that at least in the, the last edition of APA style that I'm familiar with, the first time you want to introduce all the authors, I believe up to like six or seven, and then after that, use at all. Um, so technically, this, this would be wrong because this is the first time we used it. But in my experience, most editors don't notice that anyway, so it's not something to be too concerned about. Now, line number 16, we're gonna have several authors using et al this time. That's what we're gonna do here. Uh, in text, excuse me, in text. So notice that this time, last time in line 14, I used a site P, now this time I'm gonna use a site T because it's in text now. And so I just have to just rerun it again. There's nothing unusual here because Adenoi is already in my references, so I don't have to do the bib tech thing again. So you can see here now it's at all. And so in the previous example, he was inside the parentheses. Now he's outside the parentheses. He's a part of the sentence, and that's it. And so this last one here is just kind of a combination of using authors, 
that are like you know just one author and also authors who are um, at all so again we use site p again there's nothing unusual here we just click run and you can see right there everything is set up so we got adams 1969 that's only one author and then we got adenoid at all and you know we could do lots of other combinations as well so now just to give you a brief look at the references to, to show you how beautiful this is and how much time it saves you um, you can see that the references are, are pretty good this is um just about perfect uh, in my experience normally we end it a little bit more than this but again I don't want to be too picky about that you can see we got the the first the, the, the last name the first initial the middle initial the last name is it's just beautiful all this is done automatically for you uh, the the name of the journal is in italics here you know you have the you have the volume number you have the uh, the, the the issue number the page numbers everything um, it's just great and all this is kind of done for you automatically again in this video we, we did not cover how to make the bit file we're assuming you already have that or you know how to make it but what we covered here was how to take this information inside the dot bit file that you that has your references to to use it inside law tech so I, I hope that this made sense for you please keep in mind what you need you need to the for the example that I used here you need to package nat bib and then the two main commands that you use are site t and site p site t is for putting a reference in text site p is for putting a reference in parentheses and then don't forget to also use to, to indicate your bibliography which i i call mine's exported items but you can give it whatever name you want and the bibliography style and the, the in this video it was apa but of course you know we're coming from different backgrounds and so you might need to use a different style but the same process applies so uh, my name is Darren Thomas. I am the Director of Educational Research Techniques. Take care.